The people living in the small northern main town knew this peculiar name only through the alias provided to him by the experienced ranger, Mr. Adams. When the stranger asked Mr. Adams for shelter, the old man instantly recognized him as a forester and started calling him Billy. This was the same name of his late partner when he was alive. They had a shared mission to protect the forest and its inhabitants from poachers and irresponsible hunters. To be honest, you look just like Billy. There's no mistaking it. When I first saw you, I almost felt like my old friend had come back to me. The ranger smiled and said, Mr. Adams realized that the individual was very reluctant to provide any personal information, so he decided not to pose any direct inquiries and allow them to disclose only what they felt comfortable with. Billy had no intention of divulging his past, instead he simply smiled when people attempted to pry the information from him. The young man and his old forester became the best of friends very quickly, taking on all the duties of supervising nearby forests together. The fact was that Mr. Adams used to be a part of a group of rangers working together to protect the forest. However, due to poor health and old age, he had to retire, but he still felt responsible for nature and the animals. So he continued to perform his honorary duties. Therefore, when Billy moved into Mr. Adams' house, it became much easier for him to keep the cruel poachers and other forest criminals in check. Nevertheless, the old man clearly recognized his guest as a resident of the southern regions of their country. It seems to me, Billy, that you used to live in Louisiana or in Florida before moving here. Tell me, am I right? I made a bet with the local postman that you've never been to the northern states before, so I didn't put $10 on it for nothing. Did I ask Mr. Thomas squinting at the young? In response to this, Billy fell silent for a moment, but then he noted in agreement. The old ranger smiled and rubbed his hands in anticipation of a good win. As time passed, the residents of the city got used to Billy, who gradually became one of them, and no longer raised perplexed questions about his past. A man grew a large beard and his looks changed a lot. Moreover, even deep in his soul, Billy now considered himself a northerner. The man liked the endless forests of Maine, the snow-covered hills, and the fresh frosty air of this fertile land. One day as he was returning from the store, Billy heard dogs barking loudly near the trash cans around the store. Attracted by the growling and yapping of many dogs, the man hurried towards the source of the sound. Imagine Billy's surprise when he saw that the dogs had surrounded a little. Who was trembling with fear yelping loudly and getting ready to die? Having grabbed a stick, the man drove away the pack and picked up the bloody puppy. The poor little fellow was breathing rapidly. It looked like he was dying, but Billy knew that he wasn't. The man put the puppy into his jacket and immediately felt the warmth emanating from him and his beating heart. Don't be afraid, buddy. It's all over. I won't let you get, Billy whispered, speeding up to get home as soon as possible. In the warm house of Mr. Adams, the man treated the puppy's wounds and then poured milk into a bowl for him. Looks like you found yourself a great assistant, Billy. Believe me, I have a good eye for such things. I understand dogs like no one else. The old ranger remarked admiringly when he saw the rescued. The man smiled back and petted the puppy who was now growling with pleasure. Billy named his pet Toby and became the best owner and friend for him. The pet quickly recovered and soon frolicking merrily in the yard of Mr. Adam's house, making paths in the thick snow with his chest. Billy was very happy to have a loyal pet in his life with whom he could wander the deep force of Maine without fear. Moreover, Toby turned into a huge lean which even wild wolves were afraid of. Toby was a great guard dog and always warned his master of the approach of a predator or an unfamiliar person long before they appeared. So what happened this time? During one of their walks in the forest, the dog suddenly took a hunting stance and pricked up his ears. What is it, my boy? Who you smell? Billy asked. And a whisper, continuing to follow that, and then Billy saw something that made him sweat profusely despite the extremely cold weather. The thing was that Billy noticed a strange inscription in the fresh snow, which was apparently made with a stick. The inscription read, Mom, find me. After reading these words, the man gave Toby a little pat on the back and said, Come on, my boy. Go ahead. Search quick. The dog barked understandingly and immediately rushed forward, managing to take the trail even in the middle of the snow-covered forest. Toby soon led the owner to a spruce under which there was a little snow-covered bulge. Billy gently touched it with his hand and immediately stirred, and a small head in a fluffy fur hat appeared out. Oh my god, that's a little girl. How did you get here, honey? The man exclaimed, freeing the girl from under the thickness of the snow picking up the girl. He rushed towards Mr. Adams' house as fast as he could where the owner had just started a fire in the fireplace. 
The man realized that the girl could get frostbite and therefore she urgently needed to warm up. When the old ranger saw who Billy had, he didn't ask too many questions and instead quickly brought a mountain of warm blankets. The girl looked about six or seven years old, but it was difficult to determine her age more precisely. Having wrapped a little girl in blankets from head to toe, Mr. Adams prepared hot tea with honey and began to spoon feed it to the girl. To Billy's great surprise, the girl felt quite all right and even smiled. Timidly at a rescuer a couple of times, at the same time, the girl stubbornly refused to speak and tell the men her name. For some reason, it was only a few hours later that Billy realized that the girl was probably mute. Now it became clear to him why the little girl wasn't calling for help, but simply wrote her call in the snow. So you can't speak. Can you write your name? Billy asked cautiously handing the girl a pencil and a piece of paper to his great amazement. The girl noted understanding and readily took the pencil into her little hand, and soon Mr. Adams and Billy already knew the name of the girl and that she was lost. The girl's name was Sherry and she was six years old. Wow, that's really something. But how do you get to such a remote place? Even hunters and poachers don't go that far. Billy asked wrinkling his forehead, wait a minute, why didn't I think of it? Stupid old man, the postman told me yesterday that a helicopter had crashed into our area. It had employees of a locking company on board. Maybe the girl was in the helicopter too, exclaimed. Mr. Adams proud of having come up with a plausible explanation. It's unlikely that the girl was flying the helicopter, although it's still worth checking this theory, Billy said thoughtfully. The man had no way of knowing how close Mr. Adams was to the truth in his assumption. The fact was that a surgeon in a local hospital was performing a surgery on the girl's mother at that very moment. During the helicopter crash, many of the passengers fell out of the cabin and ended up in the snow-covered forest at a distance of several miles from each other. So it happened with the girl's mother who rushed about in delirium and kept saying that she needed to find her daughter Sherry and some man named Adrian. The surgeon who performed the surgery was very surprised that the little girl was in the helicopter. Therefore, Mr. Sows immediately reported this information to the local sheriff who got a search team together and initiated a search for the missing girl right away. Fortunately, by this time, Cher was already getting worn by the fire in Mr. Adams' house and petting the dog, Toby on the back. Where's your mother, dear? She couldn't have left you alone in the snow covered, thought Billy who was most worried about this question. A few days passed during which little Sherry became rather comfortable in Mr. Adams' house. Unfortunately, she didn't say anything, but her saviors didn't care anymore. After all, the most important part was that the girl was safe and her health was no longer in danger. During this time, the girl's mother had already come to her senses and was recovering quickly in a confidential conversation with her attending. The girl said that her name was Joan Taylor, and she came to Maine from Florida. You have come a very long way, man. Was it really worth it? The surgeon asked. In surprise, of course it was worth it. There's no doubt about that. Joan answered with a sad sigh. Then gathering her strength, she began her. As it turned out, Joan was the daughter of a millionaire, so she was surrounded by luxury and wealth from an early age. But when Joan came of age, she fell in love with her father's driver, whose name was Adrian Nelson. The feelings were mutual and they soon developed into a passionate romance. Unfortunately, Joan's parents didn't take their relationship seriously and did everything they could to separate the. Thus, the girl's father used his connections to get his former driver arrested. Since the accusations were false, Adrian was outraged and refused to plead guilty. The judge didn't like his attitude, so he sentenced the unfortunate man to five years in the state county jail. However, when he got rid of his daughter's boyfriend, the millionaire father didn't know the most important part. The fact was that by this time, Joan was already pregnant with Adrian's. Despite the pressure of her parents, the woman flatly refused to have an abortion, and nine months later, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Moreover, she never forgot about Adriana seeing him in her dreams every night. One day, as she was playing with her daughter in the park, Joan was attacked by a stray dog. Fortunately, the woman noticed the danger in time and fought back, but the sight of the snarling animal frightened little Sherry so that she hasn't talked ever since. Unfortunately, even the most qualified doctors couldn't get the girl to start talking all this time. Joan was just waiting for the day when Adrian would be released and could come home. However, as Joan learned from the mother of her beloved boyfriend, her son got out of prison and left for the north of the country. Joan was very hurt. Of course, the young woman couldn't have known that it was Adrian's way to try and break free from me. Unfortunately, the man was convinced that his beloved had forgotten him and got married a long time ago, 
That's why the man moved to a small town in the north of the country where he tried to live a quiet life without attracting attention to himself. Joan hired a private detective to learn where Adrian had moved. He found him thanks to the bus ticket Adrian, bought after his release having broken off all contact with her parents. The daughter of the millionaire went after her. Unfortunately, due to the worsening weather conditions, buses were canceled that day, so I could only get to the town on a locking company helicopter. They didn't want to take me, but I persuaded the pilot to show mercy. And then we got into a terrible blizzard and the helicopter crashed in the middle of the snowy forest. And I, I couldn't hold on to Sherry and she fell out, Joan added, sobbing and stemming every word. After listening to his patient's heartbreaking story, Dr. Summer stopped for a moment and then said, you know what, ma'am? Thanks to my profession, I personally know all the residents of our town. Therefore, I can confidently say that only one person fits your description. He lives in the house of an old ranger. Mr. Adams said that this man came to his house about a year ago. I could be wrong, of course, but it's still worth a try, isn't it? So if you want, I can take you to Mr. Adams' house. The surgeon suggested timidly knowing that Joan could already get out of bed. Of course, yes, please, the girl exclaimed. Deep down, she was terrified that this man could turn out to be someone else and not the person she was looking. But when Dr. S. Ors brought her to the old ranger's house, the young woman suddenly felt agitated. The fact was that there was a little girl and a huge dog playing in front of the house. The dog looked like a wild wolf, Sherry, oh my god, this is my Sherry, exclaimed Joan and rushed to the girl. The little girl was so surprised that she simply opened her mouth and said quietly, Mommy's here. The happy girl's mother immediately hugged and picked up her daughter. She couldn't think of anyone else but her little girl all this time, but as it turned out, that wasn't all the good news she would get that day. Toby's joyful barking attracted Billy's attention, so he went outside to see what all the excitement was about. What he saw there made him burst into tears. Darling, how did you end up here? The man asked in surprise. At that moment, Joan turned around and threw herself into the arms of the man she had been waiting for, for six long years. The truth was that the man standing on the porch was none other than Adrian Nelson, who was living in the old ranger's house, and hiding from everyone under the name Billy. And when all the excitement finally subsided a bit, Adrian found out that the girl he had saved was actually his own daughter all this time. Unaware of his fatherhood for six years, Adrian Nelson was faced with an unexpected surprise. But now that he had the love of his life and daughter by his side, the man could finally break free from what he felt was a shield against confronting his past. Adrian had far more serious issues to reflect on, the kind that only somebody who treasured family, love, and companionship would understand.